M I double X station dot com. M I double X station dot com. Two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Is this mic on? Super DJ Sean Rebel Organic Radio. Oh, yeah. Today's special guests. Once again, we got to welcome them back. All Up In Your Business podcast is back in the building, y'all. I hope y'all ready for that. Yeah. And for y'all early birds, the number to dial in is not... It's it's, it's on your screen on Facebook and other places like YouTube and such. But it's 1-855-493-6499. Again, that number is 1-855-493-6499. With All Up In Your Business, y'all, we'll be right back. And when we come back, All Up In Your Business is going to be talking to y'all. Don't be mad if you're on the screen right now. That's the that's the that's the visual promo that you're seeing right now. You're gonna see them visually in a minute, y'all. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Are we speaking? We're live. Are we on the live? We are live. We are live. We We are live. live. (laughs) Good afternoon. Really? This is what we doing? It is. We tucking and rolling today? (laughs) 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 Oh, man. What it is, good people. Hello, this is lovely. (laughs) And this is your boy, Life. And welcome to All Up In Your Business podcast with Nick Station Radio Live. Organic Radio with your boy DJ, Super DJ, Sean Rebel, and you know this man, and the first, first lady, lady. K Latte Life. Life. How y'all entrepreneur, doing? entrepreneur. <laughs> she got too many titles now. <laughs> she doing this, she doing this. Not that. too many, you know. Look, you have to fill your life with things that yeah. you enjoy, right? Stuff coming to me. Shout so, out to Teresa Davis. So today will be our. Uh, Interesting. Yes, because this is our journey, like we always say. And today we'll be talking about where we fit in in our lives 
where we are now. Just in life. You know, and just kind of having a good conversation. Um, we met on Tuesday, actually, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we were um, recording a podcast and just having some really good conversations about where we fit in with faith, culture, community, um, where the climate of um, change is coming within our community and sports, music, mental health, which is, you know, a big topic for us. Of course, that's why we're here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think for us, a big thing that we wanted to focus on wasn't just the, um, the things that we agree on, but really some of the things that we disagree on and to be able to come to a, a understanding, you know, there are going to be times in your life where you feel you don't fit in at the moment mm. and you become aggressive or defensive when people are talking instead of stopping and listening to the conversation and taking the, as Light said, taking the nuggets that you really can f- nourish yourself from right. instead of taking on the negative side of things and then holding that into your heart and moving forth in life. Because at the end of the day, in order for you to improve your mental health, you have to feed yourself the positive. Um, you have to feed, feed yourself the positive um, truths. Yes, so that way you can grow. Because the whole point of mm-hmm. life is to grow, and Always. you don't obtain wisdom through the negative side of life. Mm, that's a lie. You, got it. you you can obtain wisdom through the negativity when you turn it into positive. the positive side of things. When you so turn with it into that said, you're from. Yeah. we're gonna go to the late side of the table. Hello, <laughs> good people, good people. This is uh, this is one of them conversations that I we've been talking about uh, to ourselves for quite some time. Because as you as you take this journey, we've had a few guests come in, um, but we also realize that. And it's not just the disagreeing part. It's just how we look at things from a different view, a different perspective. And as we were looking at it from a different perspective, one of the things that we realize helps you with your mental health is is it's okay to sit down and have differing points of views. It's okay to uh, enter those conversations with one thought coming in but walk away thinking differently, even if you say, well, you know, I'm I'm going to remain true to who I am and what I believe. Um, So uh, this week, as we talk about where we fit in, we would hope people would uh, tune in, chime in. Uh, and even if you reach out to us on Facebook, uh, please, we try not to ask people to send us text messages because <laughs> they try to send mm-hmm. us texts while we're on the air sometimes. Right. But uh, just reach out to us so we can, we can in- include you in the conversation. Okay? So this week's The Light Side <clears throat> um, is I'm going to read you a quote from a guy named Jim Stovall. And then I'm going to talk about how not only this thought uh, affects me, but I think affects everyone. Uh, so this quote in his in this article that he wrote is called The Search for Normality, The Search for Normality. Um, and it starts out saying, as young children, we are all born as separate and distinct creative individuals. No matter what you may hear to the contrary, our society does not reward or appreciate unique individuals. We are taught at an early age to conform in every way so we will not stand out from the crowd. In essence, we are taught to be normal. This process of normalizing everyone is akin to seeking the lowest common human denominator. This is to say, if you never stand out, you will certainly never be outstanding. While I would not advocate becoming antisocial, I do think greatness comes from individual creative expressions. Look at, look at the mentors or people whose performance you aspire to. You will find that the real achievers in this world rarely do anything normally. Monuments are never erected to normal people. They are erected to people dedicated to doing one thing exceedingly well. Find that thing in your life and avoid the temptation to be normal. So that's a quote from Jim Stovall talking about how being the the society. And and this is funny. This is where it fits into our show. uh, Where do you fit in? Because if you're black, you could be called not black enough. Uh, I watched uh, I was watching uh, Marcellus Wiley and and Roland Martin had a conversation about Colin Kaepernick being uh, one was saying he was just the right type of black. And other one was saying because he's mixed, he's not black enough Mm. or because he has this type of experience. He's not. And so you you, you have it that way. You have individuals when you're dealing with your spirituality. I used to pick with people when people would say I'm very spiritual. I was like, well, you know, I like I like truth. I like scripture. I like all of these things. You know, I I enjoy worship. I was like, but no one would describe me as spiritual. I was like, so what's, you know, really, really spiritual when they describe somebody? What what are these these labels that we put on people? And usually when we put those labels out there, what people want is people want you to fit with their normal description of 
that is. And even when it comes down to being an American and being a patriot and all of these different terms that people kind of throw out there as if somehow who you are is not their norm. So um, this is the light side. This is so this light side is in response to anybody who wants to learn how not only to fit in, but my thought on fitting in and being normal. I face this normality or being normal in many areas of life. But one area stands out to me, the normality of organized church life. I don't fit into it. I don't feel comfortable or excel in areas where I am instructed to follow a shallow pattern. I am most excited in life when I am walking, being, instructing others to live beyond self, social status, or the society that they were born in. I get excited and encouraged to test the boundaries, take risks, and adjust plans for the greater wholeness of the people that I get the, I'm fortunate enough to do life with. My responses, thoughts, and actions will never be the normal of someone else, but they will always be my regular. Busy Bee family, we will be discussing several important things today, touching on topics that may pique your interest or pluck a nerve. I pray that during today's podcast, you will be prompted to find where you fit in, pursue it with all of your gifts, resources, and the people who, who've been placed in your world. Because once you realize who you are and where you fit in, that's the beginning of your mental health process. That's where you can start becoming mentally strong. And instead of focusing on what he shared, what he said, what she said, or what they said, you'll realize that your destiny was something that was given to you by your creator. It was something that was given to you by God. And it's up to nobody to define who you are but you and your creator. So that's your life side, good people. Yes, we'd like to send it over to Super DJ Sean Rebel. To give us the mental health music. I was digging around this morning and I was looking, but I wrote that in 2009 years ago, and it was just appropriate when we were talking.
<laughs> you know, I was in my serious voice. I'm not gonna put you on. I saw you. Shot Brown. Shot Brown. Shot Brown. I'm like, oh, okay. Shot Brown. In the corner, hiding. In the building. Where does he fit in? In the corner. M I Station. Welcome back, good people. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes. So, and um, again, we had our um initial production podcast meeting on Tuesday. And then um, yesterday, we actually volunteered for the African American Cultural Festival. Yes, yes, yes. So, and that was nice. We got to like walk around and vibe with different people and um, talk to Dr. McFadden. Latari McFadden. Yes, Yes, and she was very nice. And um, it was gracious of her to allow us to be a part of that. And in walking around, I think for me, every time I go to a festival or. a cultural festival that's based around African American black community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It really again makes me feel so proud. Proud yes, and indeed. and I rejoice in the differences that we have. Mm-hmm. And I think too many times in social media, um, sports, um, when you're talking to different communities, we are grouped together, we're lumped together as this one moving piece. And the truth is is that each person's uniqueness makes us a whole community. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if everybody's were bakers, we wouldn't have anybody to cook. If every, you know, we would just have so many different things. And I think when we were at the um, festival yesterday, just watching the different way, you know, just how far we are, the way we dress, hair, listening to the different accents of each person, mm-hmm. you know, because. We, you know, when you say you're from Baltimore, or if you say you're from Maryland, the assumption is that we all speak the same, we Not all have cool. the same languages when we talk to each other. You know, all of our slang is the same. Right. It's the same thing if you're from New York. You know, they automatically go into like this weird. <laughs> accent that you're supposed to have, not, right? Not even close and when I hear and it's so energy, funny yeah. because when um my husband and I we ride motorcycles and we get to meet all of these different people from different backgrounds and a lot of the people that we ride with now happen to be you know black African American and they're from different backgrounds, different counties, different states and every time we all speak to each other, you know it's like well, where are you from? Well, where are you from? And then eventually, the next time you meet each other, you're not from anywhere. You're from here. You're from this bike club. Right. We're all together. Right. You know? So I think when we talk about fitting in, um, and when we talk about fi- figuring out your uniqueness, it is a touchy situation, especially when we talk about faith or we talk about culture. Not so much community, but faith and culture. And that was something that I really wanted to... But well, why not um, community? Because that's just a different stand for me. So I think when we talk about faith, it is a community. When we talk about culture, it is a community. But when I say faith, the assumption is that every black person, when you talk to an ignorant person, let's just go with that, they have to be a very loud mouth, uh, overly Christian person. Uh, just, type of personality. You can't just stop there, though, because no, no, no. you have a lot of Listen people who are the, they, they're Muslim. Me. I just go Muslim. A, it's a conversation. You got, you got to go flip Muslim. The flip side to that Ooh. is, is that you are the. There you go. <laughs> the flip side to that is, is that you have to be an extremist. Right. So what I'm. So that's what I'm saying. So you know the and for me the extremist would be in the Muslim culture. It would be when, when and I know that for me that's not the case. However, when you talk to and the people that I've spoken with throughout my career in the mm-hmm. legal field, you know, the assumption is, I say all the time, so hair in the black community, super huge conversation amongst right. us in the world because the world now gets to decide by law how we <laughs> can and can't wear our hair, right? Something. But I will say for me, I've worked in a law legal field, this particular one, 21 years. I've literally had conversations with HR about how I wear my hair. And was addressed, well, are you Muslim? Because if you're Muslim, you can wear your hair that way because it makes more sense. And I'm like, that's not how life works. Right. You don't get to pick who I am based on what your definition of life is. And religion, or not, does not define who I am. You know, I it, 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 it infuriates me when people have this conversation that because you're black, you should be X, Y, Z. You know, right. um, I was having a conversation with um, Light, and we were talking about, I was watching um, 
black women on own it was a conversational piece mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we were having a, they were having a conversation about single mothers black single mothers and how the assumption is is that you know you have to be this promiscuous person or you are um, loose or you don't have a sense of family or you've lost the value in your life and it was a young woman who had a, a beautiful point she had nine single births And when she stood up, she said, the assumption is that I wanted to be a single mother. She said, but really, my pregnancies came from a thank you. A thank you for letting me stay here that turned into something wrong. It turned into a desperate need to to fit into a situation. Mm -hmm. It came from a lack thereof because I needed help. And because I didn't have an abortion, which then you would tell me that I fit into a whole different category because I didn't do that. I somehow became this loose, promiscuous person. Mm -hmm. I became this irresponsible being when that was not the case. The case was that I was asking for help and my lack of strength at the moment caused, you know, caused something to occur that wasn't really within my grasp. You know, so I think that, you know, when we talk about fitting into faith, because, of course, somebody from the church side responded back to her kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, not, not, not so much you let this happen, but, you know, maybe if you got married, it would have made it better. Or maybe if, you know, as if marriage makes your life better. That's a whole different topic. Supersonic. Go ahead. I was gonna let her keep going. I was, I was, try, I was, I was thinking she was, to her. About, she was getting it. She no, but we you, st- she basically saying. No, I'm, oh. just, I'm messing with her on the supersonic. But we, we, she Ooh. was. Saying, so you, you want me to let her keep going? No, go. That's your topic. I just wanted to say that no, y'all you're saying there. um no because. That other people are saying, oh, if you're married, that means that that person is going to stay or be a help to you. That That's an assumption because it still goes back to the person and their morals and what they feel they want to do. Because sometimes it doesn't make them a great father. You may be a great husband. Or, or you may not be a great husband. Or a great mother. And, because there's some shitty and see, mothers out here. And, oh, that's, and see, that's, what, that's why I wanted to, the, the, the supersonic wasn't to stop the thought. I want the thought to continue. But you I think not want to say males. No, and, be, no, I think we, we, need, we have to be very mindful when we're having these discussions. One of the things that... And and when we were talking this week, that when we're talking about where we fit in, the whole the the whole process of where we fit in, if if you're dealing with that particular topic or that particular subject, and you're talking about because we went from faith and then then we transitioned a little bit to the the this this, this particular situation, and when um, Lovely told me about it, it was very interesting because it gives you insight. And so what I gain from it is it's oftentimes and one of the things I don't like that comes out of certain circles and, and, and even in tying it into my life side. The reason I say I didn't fit into a particular that 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 structure or a certain religious structures was not because my faith is very strong. There, my, my, my faith in the word is there. My belief in, in who Christ is and what he's done for me. All of that is in my heart and that all of that is lived out in my life. But where I have issues is, is that the human, the, the humans that we interact with and that we deal with, we forget that we are human and we forget that we try to turn to me God's truth into our truth. We try to turn it into our perspective. And when we get to that position of instead of engaging that young lady to have the proper conversations, we try to fit her into a very small box based upon our perspective and our view that mm-hmm. oftentimes has nothing to do with the Bible. And they'll pull out ver- certain verses to fit the context right. they're wanting to make it fit in. And and even from a moral standpoint, I understand where they're going, but the but the love and the capacity to kind of try to help that person to become whole is not going to be cast when they when you're doing the judgment portion of it, and it's not going to be cast when you're not engaging that person in the right conversation. And so also, it could be your daughter or your son who's in that particular situation, and then do you change oh, the, the, the definition of what you some, see some in do. order to fit into your family so that now you don't have the embarrassment so that yeah, now that. it's some kind of you know or people who are forced to get married at a young age right. just because of the situation but so, some do i would just say some do some yeah. don't but i still think there's a danger even when they're doing that and so no i agree yeah. but that's what i'm saying so when we're talking about um situations where you fit in you know and the flip side to that is i mean or the other conversation we were having just um culturally having conversations with each other and aligning ourselves with our truth, but also being able to hear the other side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Light and I, we listen and receive information very differently. You know, he is very passionate about how he um, receives his information. He loves to debate, and I'm the flip side. I love to listen to what you have to say, and then I'll respond back to you. 
It doesn't mean that we either one of us have less passion Clarify. for what we're doing. Clarify. I'm, I'm the one who you wrote know. the poem. Would you listen? You know, <laughs> neither. It, it doesn't mean that either one of us have less passion for what we're doing. There you go. Right. It's just that we receive the information process it and get to the same place usually mm-hmm. yep, like 98 percent of the time we get to the same place mm-hmm. but it just takes a moment you know we just travel I'm different a dude. Streets i like the beef I, and you it's know. not just because i'm a dude because i know very competitive because women just as competitive as men it's, it, and y'all know yeah, this I was big gonna time say, it's not you yeah, know no, no. I, when i say I've when proved, i say you know. when i say that that beef part is is for me it's sometimes just fun just to pick with people it's sometimes right. fun just to get people going um and, and oftentimes to me, you, I learned from that individual why they're saying what they're saying. I learned a long time ago that even if someone is, is wishing me ill or harm, I've learned to ex- find the truth in some of the stupidest and most negative things that they're saying just so I can try to say, hey, even if they, they came to me with the intent to cut me or to hurt me or to harm me, but was any part of what they were saying true of my character, true of my actions, true of my intent? And when I look at that, if I do find something true there, I would go to that person and say, you know what? I receive what you said, but I reject you. I said, so I don't have to deal with you to receive that truth because this may be who I am. Um, it was a line in um, an old Monica song where Ludacris said, I might have said what they, I might have done what they said I did, but I'm not who they say I am. And he said, try to throw my name in the dirt, but I really don't give a damn. And it's like when he said that, like even that line in that song spoke to me. It's like, you know what? Some people can see what you do and try to judge you a certain particular way. But he's like, you know what? Yep, I did it, but that's not me. Right. And because that's not me, I'm not going to allow who you say I am or what mm-hmm. you what I've done to determine what the course of my life. That's and right. so I think that when you receive truth, the only time I like to pick back on people is because I'm just, I'm, I'm always going to go at you. It's yeah. just fun for me. Yeah. And where you fit in now, it can change. You know, the whole thing about maturity and learning and growing and discovering who you are, which is a beautiful thing, is that what you thought at 21 – you look at from 31 and be like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. What? Well, or mm-hmm. sometimes you're like, no, I really believe that. That's mm-hmm. that's that's me. That's 100 percent right. me. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so the fit in, you know, light and I talk to each other a lot, you know, and just what we accept culturally, what we accept through our faith, what we accept from the community, you know, how what we accept from ourselves and our family, you know, taking um taking a step back sometimes to learn a lot from our children Mm -hmm. because they're bringing in so much information Mm. so much new and they are so wise for where they are yes and still so very you know new to the world but a lot of the times when we talk to each other or we'll repeat something that one of our kids said or you know something that we've read in the news Mm -hmm. whether we agree or disagree with it you know we've come to an understanding that it doesn't have to fit us for us to un- to listen. And right. sometimes when you listen, you understand a little bit. You know, we were having a conversation about the revolt. Um, the, re- uh, the revolt summit 2019 that was held down in Atlanta, hosted yeah. by uh, Mr. Sean Combs. Okay. And we um, initially, I just caught a snippet of it. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I, I, then I caught a snippet. <laughs> and I sent some clips to Light to look at because I know that, like, that for she me. Likes, she he, wanted to get me going is what she you wanted. You know, he's, that's his thing. You know, and I love when he when he starts Shot. thinking because in the morning he going. starts to type. Mm-hmm. And then he sends out all of his little, you know, memes. And it's great. You know, you get to read kind of where he is. And my oldest daughter, she said, Ma, you should look at the whole thing. Look at it at, as it um, in its entirety because you'll get a lot of information from it. She said, you're not going to agree with everything, but you'll get a lot of information from it. And I think what I really um, held on from watching that summit was the need for unification, for education, for our political policies, and really just for the mental health side of things. I know that for light, we were we were debating. I mean, like, well, he was debating with me. I, I kept women. saying, I I'm going to shut she, the book on him. She she uh, she wasn't debating. Women no. never debate. They never debate, right? We well, do we debate. Do. But this, don't? Yes, I do. But this particular time, that's just not my language. You know, that's just not my, that's not my communication language. Um, and I was saying to him, you know, he was really passionate about Can what, they see what my he face? was saying. Can they see my mm-hmm. face? Yeah. All right, I was just making sure they could see my eyes. You keep talking. I'm just making things while you're talking. Oh, we talking because we got some times when I don't get to say nothing. But I'm oh, you could. Let's go ahead. Let, let's I just know. You're throwing <laughs> salt and dirt there over here. Go. I just don't understand. <laughs> no, y'all, you're simple good. Simple if y'all ain't know. Look, I will wrap this up. So we were having a, he was having a debate with me. 
you know that she talking for me this week too. She said, and light said, and light, and light said, and I was like, so I'm, I'm, I'm just on the receiving so, end of telling me about myself. I'm, I'm we were having a conversation, <laughs> and um, I think the the gist of the conversation was he was very passionate about what he was saying, and I, and I absolutely agree with what mm-hmm. he was saying. I didn't agree how it, it came at delivered. me. That's right. Um, and I said to him, you know, the difference in communication really is the loud preacher versus the quiet preacher. Mm-hmm. You can receive the same message, but right. it just depends on how it's how given it's to delivered. you. And so that, with that, that, that was very. That, I was just said that was a, that was that's, that stood out for me. And when she said that, it was like light bulb moment because in that moment, all of what was being conveyed, there was so much yelling and it was so much. The crowd was looking at it like a sporting event as opposed to an informative uh, summit. And so because they were looking at it like a sporting event and, and because there were a lot of things that were said that was that was true uh, concerning like blacks and politics and, and how we should be approaching this. And when when I sat down and I, I took the time because I think you sent me three clips. Yes. She sent me three clips and as she sent me the three clips, I was like, let me find these clips and look at what's being said, because one of the things we, we want to deal with, because we're going into 2020, we know it's going to be it's an election year and you're going to have a lot of people talking to the, the black or the African-American community. And as they're going to be talking with them, like we should be engaging ourselves on how this is going to not, when, it, when I say impact our culture, what impacts your community, what impacts the, the people you put in the office is going to impact your mental well-being. It's going to impact your mind. Absolutely. And as it impacts your mind, you should be paying attention, not for the ooh and ah moments, but mm-hmm. the let's get down to the is this really going to take place and is this something that's going to help me and my family and then not only that what role can i play in this helping me and my family it's not about what you can give me it's not about what i think you should be doing it's about what role am i what role is the my family going to play in helping our community become better because we can't continue to look for those individuals outside of who we are to make sure we're doing well and so when we were doing this I think as we were talking and when when Lovely was saying her point was like you know what I just wanted to shut the book on it because they were making this noise and it, and it was just she looked at it as, as, as a lot of static and because it was just so loud I, I told her the, I yeah, she couldn't receive she couldn't well, receive the yeah. information and I being someone who listens to talk radio and sports talk radio and political talk radio I I was used to that noise and because I'm used to hearing people kind of go back and forth like that for me it was easier to digest but when she made the point of preaching of course that resonates with me because right. me I was I was an individual who I didn't like I, I the the there were certain I needed the quiet preacher. I needed the substantive word preacher to be to to show emotion, but not be emotional when I would lose what he was saying because I would. I, and so when she said, that, I was like, ah, so it makes sense to me now. So you just told me that you need to have it either you can either read it or it's somebody who's having discourse not having these disputations where they're just going back and forth back and forth and the crowd is going ooh ah and making all of this noise and running around and it was like okay you got some good one liners but right. are you actually listening to what's being said right and during that summit a lot of people were missing some of the very important points that were being that were being made whether they agree with or disagree with it you had you had a point where at one point in time the clip, the first clip that went viral, and I saw it on DL Hughley, I saw it on Roland Martin, I saw it. Uh, it was somebody, somewhere else. Um, like all of the big TV shows were talk. I mean, the radio shows were talking about it this week because all of them kept popping up on YouTube. Once I looked it up, once to look at it, you know how YouTube just feeds you everything you're looking at. They, the, the, the clip was when Ti says to the young lady Candace Owens or the woman Candace Owens, he says, "Tell me when. Uh, tell me a time when." Um, it was great in America for black mm-hmm. people. And when he said this, that, that was the thing that kind of got everybody going. And the, the bad part for her was because it caught her. She didn't have an answer for it. Right. She, she didn't have an answer for it. But then, see, the, the flip side of that was Killer Mike did. Killer Mike, actually, oh, yeah. he injected into the conversation mm-hmm. right after the Civil War. The, the black businesses that were started, right. the black communities right. that were started. And black he talked about yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. He, he talked about all of that being that that was a period that was great for us. The problem that followed that is where the the, the Candace Owens and, and, and different individuals would get into trouble because right after that you had these group of Southerners and you had these group of Northerners who started to try to root out and run those black businesses that did do right. well out of business. Mm-hmm. And they start making laws and passing policies to, to still restrict right. those things. And so that didn't have anything to do with upward mobility. Those blacks were doing well. Right. And it was a renaissance in the black community. The problem was you still had society fighting against them and the fact that those who were in power so 
I'll, I'll, right, what I'll do right now is we're going to take a little break. <laughs> my man. <laughs> and so we can let our listeners digest that. But as my sister says. It will be back. There we go. <laughs> Organic Radio, Super DJ Sean Rebel. Right now, we just going to a commercial break. We got All Up In Your Business podcast up in the building. Shout out from East Coast to West Coast, North and South. We up in here. Right now, I'm going to blaze y'all with one of them cuts, you know what I'm talking about. This one right here is my man, Crooklyn Dodger, Dodger the Rebel. The song... He got a whole lot of people on this song, man. This joint is dope. They call this one the announcement. People, y'all, get your tape decks ready, like we said in the old school. Crooklyn Dodger, y'all, the announcement. We're going to bring that back, y'all. We got some technical difficulty. So we're going to bring that back. One moment. One, two, one, two, one, two. We're great to do it, y'all. Something's going on here. We're going to kill that noise, though.
my bad, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We have to bring it back. The records wasn't playing properly. I don't like doing that to my man. Shout out to Dodger the Rebel, man, and the rest of his team. But I got something for y'all. If y'all tuned in right now listening to the show, after this podcast right here, I'm releasing... Y'all hear me? I'm releasing the unreleased version of the mixtape for my man Buckshot Shorty. So if you on here right now, I'm going to play that joint all the way through. Y'all can enjoy it without flaw, without crackling and all that in your ears. It's the leaked version, y'all. So y'all going to hear it first on Organic Radio. Because my man taking a long time to put it out there. He, he's supposed to drop that joint in June. Right now it's September. So that's July, August. Yeah, that's three months, man. We got, we got other stuff we got to do. Shout out to my man Green Lantern, 1574. We gonna get it. Shout out to Dean Fisher. You know what it is, boy. My man James Media Pope, what up, what up? Dodge the Rebel, what up, what up? The whole New York fam, HBG fam, Pioneer City, Me Village, Freetown, Glen Burnie, B. Moore, DC, definitely in the building. North Kakalaka in the building right now. That's right, that's right, that's right. We're going to keep going, but uh, just shout out to all the cities, man. I've been everywhere, so shout out to California, West Coast, St. Louis, Atlanta, definitely in the building. Um, everywhere we've been at, man, so Mix Station is on the rise, y'all. If you ain't had a clue, this is what we do. Super DJ Sean Rebel. Shout out to my man Kane Cole, Teresa Davis Media Productions, Julian's Big Mistake. Percocets and a whole lot of people on the shows, you know what I'm saying? Let's go. Right now, you're listening to Organic Radio with your host, Super DJ Sean Rebel. And we got uh, the special guest once again up here, All Up in Your Business podcast. They got their own podcast, but they, you know, the platform for the platform is giving them a platform so they can do what they do. Feel me? All right. Y'all want to call in? Uh, the number is one eight five five four nine three six four nine nine. Make sure y'all tap these people up. They got some good stuff going on. Multicultural conversations about mental health and awareness of it because we all have it, including myself. We all have it. So there it is. As my man Gilma says, there it is. And we almost back, y'all. We'll be right back about another minute, and you'll be hearing from all up in your business podcast. Right now, I'd like to shout out all my sponsors. A big, 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 big shout out to my man Shy Brown for getting everybody to the studio. You know what I'm saying? My man Shy Brown is right over there in the corner. Hot, y'all can't see him on camera. But I told him I'm gonna shout him out anyway. He's gonna be the infamous, famous guy. Nobody knows what he looks like yet, but I got photos of him, y'all. So, y'all, sit, y'all hit me up on FB, man. I'll send you a photo of this guy. They call him Shy Brown. All right? You know what I'm talking about? They in the background laughing, y'all can't hear him though. So, uh, shout out to Expectations Barn Lounge, but they're not just a barn lounge, there's so much more. Make sure you tune in. Also, shout out to my guy, DJ Exclusive, aka Hike. What up, fam? What up, fam? The whole Baltimore DJ Zone and beyond, Raw Man Flavor, Man Flavor Records, and getting him up here next week, y'all. We're gonna talk to Raw Man Flavor up in the studio live about. His movement and his entertainment company, as well as his DJing skills, because we're going to battle. Nah, I'm playing. We ain't going to battle. That's family right there. But uh, we're going to get him up in here so y'all can talk to him live as well. He might even have some tickets for y'all, so y'all make sure y'all tune in. And when I say tickets, I mean concert tickets. I'm talking about stuff. He gave away two tickets to Chris Brown concert last week, so he got some stuff going on as well, so make sure y'all tune in. And if you didn't have a clue, this is DJ Sean Rebel, Organic Radio show along with my new podcasters they call themselves all up in your business podcast basic black reggie mcmurray i see you out there man with them new shirts them pc shirts man i got mine too i got two of them three of them i might be getting four that's right that's right that's right 
FSV where Ricky Bryan, I see you out there, baby, baby. All right. Who we got else? Uh, we got Terra Cafe 2, man. My man Terrence downtown, town, down, mm-mm. downtown on 25th Street, B more. You know what it is. Terra Cafe. I shouted out Teresa Davis, but um, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to her whole team again. I even shouted out James Media Pope, Kane Cole. And the whole rest of the team out there I did that already but I'll do it again Cause my wife says make sure you get them in there Make sure you get them in there So I'm doing that Big up, big up I said Julian's a big mistake as well I'm not sure what you're doing over there <laughs> But I'm doing it, I'm doing it You're not listening, you watch it but you're not listening Anyway, I'm just messing with my wife real quick So uh, we about to get back into this thing called All Up In Your Business We just had another show while they weren't even on air. <laughs> we was getting it in. Faulkner. Super DJ. Gilmer. Sean Rebel. Yep. 1855 Call in, good people. Uh, we would love for you to join the conversation. Um, <laughs> let me find my place, man. Messing around with uh, Lovely. I think I almost lost my voice. I did, I, he was going Stash. off. I was like, mm. I should go off on the air, though. That's when I, we want I, me to go I, off. Look, you was on the air. I just paused. I was like, I just need to listen. And if they ain't checking in, they ain't on air. I mean, they go back. They go back. All right, that's good. We, we'll let them go back. Okay. There's a lot of stuff there. So, good people, as we were talking about fitting in, we talked a little bit, and, and Lovely had touched on faith, and I want to I wanna chime back into that because we had a good conversation on Tuesday. Tuesday, <laughs> this past Tuesday, when we were talking about it. And, you know, when I talked about the light side moment, I, I always tell people, like, my, my goal, and especially in, in this sharing of this light side, when I say I don't fit into that structured, shallow pattern that exists within, um, and it's not all, uh, what, what, when I was talking about me, I don't fit into that structure because it's, it's, it does just what that person said, what Jim Stover was talking about. It tries to make everybody be fit into a box and be real normal they want everybody to look a certain way dress a certain way think a certain way and even for the more progressive organizations of progressive churches out there even i I've, I've seen um i've seen and and i've just seen where they want you still to be it's about them and it's not about you your family your your people and your community i'm more community oriented and more community based and so for me it, I, I would never tell anybody not to do what they need to do. I know for me, when it comes to my faith and, and my walk, I want it to be shown first and foremost uh, in the way that I live with my family. Secondly, in the way that I live my, my life abroad in the community. When I say abroad, just talking about in my community. And then as I kind of go and travel um, to the different places and things of that nature, I want you to see who I am and I want you to see it before me, before you hear it from me. And so, uh, faith for me was what was or faith for me is a very personal thing and so i will never be an individual who knocks or takes a shot at uh christianity because i am a bible believing uh christ follower is what i'll say i'm a Bible. so uh but when it comes to those individuals who may not like uh who may not like those organizational structures i can understand why people don't like what they see going on and how it actually turns some people off from what happens in those faith organizations so i just kind of wanted to say that as we were kind of coming out because uh, I didn't want anybody to misconstrue my opening statement on my light side with uh, a shot at the church. Um, when I want to take a shot at the church, I'm just going to take a shot at the church and see what I have to say. Plus, I think um, we need to really be very open to people because I feel like I have way more faith than religion. I think that for me, you know, my faith has been what has propelled me forward in life. I my rules of engagement are always to treat people kind until they prove that they don't deserve it. It's always to listen to someone and believe their truth until they prove they are faulty. You know, and there's sometimes I know that, you know, the assumption that pe- everybody tells the truth, that's a lie. We lie to ourselves all the time. That, you know, extra, mm-hmm. you know, meal we eat or that, you know, the, the um, statement we make to a friend or that, yes, I want to go with you when you really don't want to go. You know, there are things in life that we just innately say to people, please. And then we have to go back and say, hey, no, I didn't mean that. Mm-hmm. What I really meant was, and yes, that's a lie. You know, so when it comes to like the, you know, faith on Tuesday, we were talking and I said to him, 
faith is what allowed me to forgive almost everything wrong that has happened in my life because I know that you know we are human mm-hmm, and we mm-hmm. make mistakes All of us. and there are times where your mistake is so detrimental that it is like a bomb that blows up the community mm-hmm. your house That's right. you know or another person but that doesn't mean that you're a damn you know it's damnation for you it just means that if you decide that you want to repent to your faith mm-hmm. for yourself to become a better person for you because you don't need to become a better person for me that's faith i need you to be a good person for For you you. because that's your faith you know and faith has allowed me to be able to apologize when i'm wrong Mm -hmm. you know because sometimes a person may hurt you but it's really just a reaction from something that you've done to them but you if you only see yourself as correct Hmm. you know i thought that was almost every woman that i've ever met in my life that's not true can we please pause yeah, for I the didn't cause. even take it um he had the he, I, I'm assuming he's saying he learned that was the past not that you think that well, you look, thought right? dear <laughs> audience let he's me trying to mess to with you, you. He wants I, I, me I was talking to you I was just talking, I'm just, you're, you're I didn't even take that in because I said I know that's not true in a very personal way one I'm joking yes I know. he is but, but there's always some truth in every joke. Oh, story. yeah, I know. Yeah. Because like, we can we say plenty of things to say, y'all, man, it's like, wait a minute, you know, I don't have nothing to do with that. That was a I can't wait till we get to, I cannot wait till we get else. to that show. Because, uh, and you, 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 you ladies both know we've had this conversation as we're sitting here. The one thing that I sense, and it's, it's funny, I, I don't believe in, uh, I, I, I don't believe that we have to change or lose our, our roles as we re- realize who we are, and I'm talking about whether gender role or who you are inside of your relationship, or even as you're just doing life. But the one thing that I find funny is when we try to, there are certain old stereotypes that were negative, that were pro- propelled or projected right. by men and that were projected mm-hmm. by a male dominant culture. But some <laughs> of those things that were projected, even though they were misapplied, doesn't mean that they're, they weren't the right way for a dude to live. And I always That's tell true. people, I'm never going to take away from who I am, right. especially in leading my home and doing the things that, and when I say leading, it's not like I'm leading by myself. We have a caller there. Okay, I somebody else is talking. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for calling Good in. Good afternoon. How Good y'all afternoon, doing? Everybody, DJ, DJ Sean Rebel, First Lady of Mix Station, Light K- and K- Light. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Hey. What's going County on, boy T.O. County in. boy T.O. What's up, C.R.? <laughs> What's going on, my fam? Oh, I ain't got to see y'all hat hey, on today. If you, if you if you were watching oh, us live, God. you would see I have a different hat on today. He want to keep talking about his hat. Can you? Yes, yes. Give us the reason why you call. <laughs> <laughs> he a Steelers fan. I can mess. I hear a Steelers fan. I can mess with him. Oh, oh. Different show. On. Different show. See? Different show. Oh my God! <laughs> conflict always. You need a resolution in there too. You know, stop creating conflict. All right, you got it. You got anyway, it. Anyway, just just talking about fitting in and just listening to the conversation and. Uh, there's always a challenge, especially when we talk about church. Um, I grew up in a variety of churches and still trying to figure out the way in church because it's like it's kind of embedded in me mm-hmm. uh, since because I've been going to church since I was a, a baby. Mm. But um, just as CR talked about, you know, you try to figure it out, like, do I really fit into an actual church or do I just need to be doing what God's called me to do and where does that fit into the world because mm. we're not a part of this world because we believe in a certain faith mm-hmm. which does take us away from the environment that most of us live in mm-hmm. um, and so trying to fit in is really not what we're called to do especially with our faith because why we believe in something that's bigger than what we live in day to day so T.O. let me ask you this question when you say we're called not to fit in meaning what do you mean by that because I, I know and I, I've heard people say that often that we're you know we're in the world but not of it and I know what they talking about first John when they state that but when you hear that verse what does that mean because the very savior that that walk the earth he didn't walk the earth and stay in in the, in the sanctuaries or the temples he, that very savior spent his time with people who were called sinners who were called whores were called adulterers he spent his time in the world so when i hear that statement right. my question would be how do, how does that apply to us when we say we fit we're supposed to be in it but not of it well that means that how you do your fellowship it's your presentation how do you talk to people are you is everything you say um, even though it might hurt someone's feeling, but if you're coming from a place of love and, and trying to understand and promote uh, posit- uh, growth, mm-hmm. not positivity, but mm-hmm. growth, mm-hmm. Um, 
then you're doing what God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. And and yes, it's more so than being in the building of the church, but it is to be in this world mm -hmm. living out, the you know, pr professing the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that is fellowship. And yes, it's going to be fellowship with people who are sinners, you know, because we're, we're, we were called to help those who are sick. And, we're to, and when we talk about mental health, health, we are talking about a lot of people who physically don't look sick, but mentally and spiritually, they are, they are demonized, they are, they are just um, in the pits of hell, and we really have to be diligent about fellowship with, fellowship with people. I mean, that's really what it boils down. God fellowship with everyone. He went into people's homes. He talked to them, and he took a minute to understand. Well, I mean, because, you know, Jesus could read hearts, so, you know, we can't read hearts, but mm -hmm. if you take time to take a few minutes and listen to someone's talk and how they talk, you can tell where their heart is mm -hmm. and being able to, to uh, let, you know, the Lord flow through you and speak to them. I mean, that's really what this, this life is about and, and those who are called to the Christian fellowship. And I think that, uh, you know, to piggyback off of what you said and, you know, just bring it around, that's the whole reason why we have um, decided to do this mental health podcast is because it, yes, we focus on black mental health. However, mental health is a united issue. That's right. It is absolutely not a black issue, Asian issue, you know, a white issue. It is a united issue. And no matter how wonderful our community is within, we could all be mentally healthy, quote unquote. But if the people that we have to deal with or talk to every day don't feel that they are mentally whole, we're still going to have the battle. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we are not the only people on the earth. You know, and that fellowship, you know, those conversations that you have, you know, Light always tells me the stories about him and his neighbor um, or his neighbors or his co-workers who they have very different opinions on topics, mm -hmm. but they're, they're able to talk to each other and have a clear understanding at the end of the conversation or agree to disagree. I have the same thing. You know, where I work, you know, I, I work with a lot of ladies. We might not always agree on how to present something, but the the respect that we have for each other is enough to agree to disagree. So who acquiesces when it's a bunch of ladies having a conversation? Us. Oh my gosh, really? Stop it. See? CR, stop it. <laughs> Look, he just he just he's just going for <laughs> broke. I've learned to ignore a lot of the things he says. It's okay. I, hey, I Lovely, I got your back. I, I got know you do. Back. I know. Uh, every, look, every time you call him and tell him about himself, I appreciate it. You know, just keep doing it for yeah, me. Yeah, you know. But, I mean, like you said, it's so important that we deal with the day-to-day, -day, the people we're around, and that we take time to talk with folks. And, you know, especially because, like, you know, at my job, I definitely don't agree with a whole lot of people in my office. But you know what, though? I've had some great conversations That's with right. the people in my right. office. And I've come to understand, not saying that I come to agree, but I've come to understand the other side. And I believe that they understand me as well. So there's a great, there's a great respect that's given when you take the time to talk to one another wholeheartedly and not with just trying to get your own feeling and opinion across the table. Yeah, we want to thank you so much for calling so, in. We appreciate the love. Not a problem. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, County Boy T.O. All right, now. Talk with y'all later. I'll Take it easy. So Light is going to uh, give us some pointers. <laughs> um, good people. Uh, one of the things, and guess what I'm going to do? Guess where I'm, I got these pointers from? There's, they're not really. There's some things that, as we're talking about mental health and uh, as our show, we, we have, we're going to touch on, we're going to call this our first or our opening mental health cipher. So we're going to have, we're going to touch on 10 topics real quick. But as we touch on them, we, as we're going through, we're not going to spend uh, too long elaborating or going into it. But when I say this, the two of you will chime in. And as you chime in, uh, we'll have a small piece. But we're talking about 30 second kind of responses to okay. to what's being said. OK, Challenge. so this article, <laughs> so this, this article, I read a very good article uh, from Amy Morin. Uh, she's a licensed clinical social worker and a psychotherapist uh, and the author of 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do. 13 things mentally strong people don't do and when mm. i read this article this article this morning it was it was one of those very like man because as we were going through this and i was listening to all of the different I, I i we educate ourselves all week long listening to podcasts and listening to different things and your spirit can sometimes be inundated or flooded with just nasty and blah and so as you're doing this one of the things we decided one of the things i told myself i was doing this morning was you're not listening to anyone you may read a few things about 
how to respond because when we're talking to people about fitting in, mm-hmm. fitting in, there's things that you need to remove from your life or things that you need to check into your life with just so you can realize, okay, I want to be well. What do I need to do to start that process? And just like with anything else, when it comes to physical fitness, when it comes to a diet, when it comes to learning education, there has to be some type of parameters that you start setting for yourself so that you can practice them day after day. It doesn't mean that you're going to do them right in the beginning, but you at least got to say, I always mess with my baby and say, I say, if you say you're going to do something, you at least got to try it a little bit. That's and I right. say, and I, the easiest thing for us to do, and this is what I'm going to encourage people to do. And my man, uh, my brother-in-law, Shy Brown, been messing with me lately. I got to mess with my man, Shy. But he's been messing with me lately because he be like, he say, he say, what's up, Lamont? You look like you dropped a few pounds. And I was like, you know, we trying some, do, some things differently. And as we were trying the things differently, I was just trying. I basically stopped eating cookies 10 o'clock at night is all I did and bowls of cereal 10 mm. o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> and so I adjusted that. But as he was messing with me, when he was saying that, I, now when he says it, it feels good. When it, I was like, that's my man. I, I went home, told Trish. I said, it's cool. I said, I said, my man's seeing that. That's what's up. And she said, well, I was telling you that it's working. I said, but when I look in the mirror, you know how you look in the mirror, you draw, oh, you draw yeah. something, you be like, it ain't working. But I keep telling myself in my mind, I'm not quitting. Regardless of what I don't see, right. I'm going to keep on going. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is regardless of what doesn't change when we go over this mental health cipher in these next you know, 20 minutes or so, what I want you to do is even if it doesn't snap to and your life doesn't become perfect and your mental well-being doesn't become whole in a week or two, don't stop the practice. Don't stop doing what it is that you need to do. So the first thing that you need to do or to give up. So these are 10 things that you need to give up that actually destroy your inner peace. And so, like I said, we're going to get 30, 30 to um, 60 second responses from those in the room. And Super DJ, feel free to chime in if you, if you would like. So engage, <laughs> engaging with toxic people. The people you surround yourself with affect the way you think, feel, and behave. Engaging with people who lie, gossip, bully, or cheat takes mm-hmm. a toll on your well-being. So for me, it, all I will say that most of my life, I have been a very singular person in how I um, craft my relationships. Mm-hmm. I'm very, uh, I'm very selfish about how I allow people into my life. Mm-hmm. If you are toxic, toxic. If you want to hurt people, if you're mean spirited, I don't allow you in. Because my biggest thing is, I do unto others as you will have them do unto you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want you to hurt me. So if you have that type of person, when you come to me and I see that you have a vicious heart or you're hurt beyond repair for you at the moment, Mm -hmm. I back out of the situation. I just don't allow because I believe that whatever spirit you allow past your corridor, stay in your house until you can get them out. And that's just my take on that. Copy that. How do you handle uh, what are your thoughts on engaging with toxic people? Are you good, or you you, you want us to keep moving? But I I'm like good. Um, once I once I know, then I just uh, curve. You know, mm-hmm. I I take you as you are, but I I don't you have to who let that you win. Is. I don't have to let that um, negative energy. And that's a good point. And that's uh, you know what when me. you say that, that's actually one of the ones they say down there because sometimes the people, the toxic people that you engage with, the people that you work with, they're right. people that you may be going to church with. There may be mm-hmm. people that you're doing a contract with. You know, a contract right. with for doing the show for, and so you're dealing with them, especially if it's ongoing. But you have to learn how to measure those right. things, and that's something that it talks about later on. There, so I'll go on to the next one: excessive self blame, thinking everything is 100 percent your fault, whether it's a failed relationship or an accident, will affect the way you see yourself and the world around around you. You can't always prevent bad things from happening. Right. Mentally strong people take appropriate accountability. So when you're dealing with self blame and Talk to me, uh, K Latte, uh, about the self blame, uh, and it, this is talking about giving up these things. But when you when you hear self blame, how, how do you approach it, handle it, or is it something that you deal with or struggle with? Um, in the past, I've dealt with it a lot as far as relationships. Because every time something went wrong, I was always, you know, I'm a firm believer of checking myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, lame certain accountability. So I would be like, "Dang, what did I do?" Or you know, let me check my soul first before I get mad at the other person. And now I'm like, as a mature person. I would say um, I'm always going to look in the mirror, um, but that doesn't mean I have to get upset about it. And I'd be like, okay, what did I do to make this go left? So let me check me and then let me go um, calmly talk to this other person and see, you know, we can meet some common ground. Because I'm not, uh, people get upset about agreeing to disagree. 
Yeah. I'm okay. And sometimes with that. it's gonna be yeah. Yeah, like okay, you just said, see where I was coming from because most of the time we said it all the time, me and Rebel. That we were talking about the same thing, but you had just two wasn't different getting approaches. my delivery. Yeah, yeah we definitely approaches. have two different deliveries, and it's like Mars and Venus. <laughs> all right, you on the clock. I'm good. You good? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's cool. The 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 therapist. One of the things she said was healthy. You know, she said mentally strong people take appropriate accountability. They recognize that they are responsible for their choices, but they also acknowledge factors beyond their control, like the state of the economy, the weather, and other people's choices. There are lots of things that you can't control, and when you're when when self blame is so destructive to your mental health. And one mm. of the things that you have to realize is even when it comes to politics, mm. the people that you listen to on the radio, all of those things, you don't have to listen to all of the voices or as, as my sister says, those, ne- those negative and evil spirits, you can block all of that stuff. It's our choice to say, I'm not listening today. Sometimes we continue to listen way too much. Mm-hmm. So chasing happiness is the next topic. And lovely, mm. Bill to you on this one. Thinking you need to be happy all the time will backfire. Mm. Momentary pleasure is much different than long-term satisfaction. So that's something that I think most of us learn as we get older through the trials and tribulations of life. Um, I, for me, now, when I am sad or when I have anxiety or when I feel depressed, um, I'm very you you open. You still do those things? You yeah, still get sad? Yeah. Oh, like right man. now. Oh. <laughs> um, but no. Um, no, sometimes people miss that and they don't. No. They assume that but, we don't um, have those moments. I... I am very upfront with the people who I love and that I trust with my feelings about where I am in my life at the moment. I don't lie. I don't pretend to be something that I'm not. And what I've learned is that when you do that, you allow other people to bring comfort or also expose their vulnerabilities as well. It took a long time to do that because to be vulnerable to a group of people that you're not 100% sure of is a scary thing. But I do know that Mm -hmm. for me, to be vulnerable is for me to be Lisa. And I love who I am at this moment in my life. Cool. Mentally strong people, when it comes to chasing happiness, mentally strong people are willing to put in the hard work it takes to gain contentment is one of the things that uh, Miss Marin says. And when she was talking, I think that you got to understand that chasing happiness is, is is a fleeting thing, meaning we are, we are supposed to experience a whole spectrum of emotions. One of the things I like to tell I've, I've told myself and I tell other people is, is I said we were created by I, we were created. We we're created by a God who when you read and you study the spirituality or the Bible, their emotions and the God that we that created us and all of those emotions are passed on to you. So as those emotions are being passed on to you, it's not foreign and you shouldn't feel ashamed that some days you wake up and you just don't feel 100 percent. Or sometimes there are things that happen and impact your life. You don't have to block them out or act like they don't exist. Just acknowledge them, understand, but continue to work towards the peace that you're looking for through groups of friends, through reading and, and making sure you get the right voices in your head. And also, just a quick note. Also, remember that through your trials and tribulations, you find light. And Always. that is just the way life is. I think that so many times we get stuck in a very dark place, sometimes for too long, but we don't realize that at the end, if you do put in the hard work and you believe that you're going to get better, you can get better. No, you just, that's a, thank you sis, for that, because I think that's, that there, there's work to this process. Don't believe, um, don't, don't believe you, like, like I said, you start today, tomorrow it stops. You start, you know, uh, three weeks, six weeks from now. And I'm talking about your relationships, your learning, your physical fitness, whatever it is that you're doing, your faith, your journey that you're taking in life. It's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. It's called life for a reason. And it, but you can control and measure how you're doing it. So, no, great point, sis. Um, next, Kelate, staying comfortable. It may seem like staying inside your comfort zone is the key to feeling good in life. But avoiding discomfort always backfires in the end. So how do you approach? Because there are some people in life, and we talked about this a few weeks ago, where if it's like uh, when your kids or if your, your people, sometimes you don't see chaos in your home. Mm-hmm. And so when life hits you with it, or some people just look at life through rosy, the, the rose-colored glasses, where it's like, no, everything is okay. And it's like, and then they have that, that Florida Evans moment where they break down and be like, damn, damn, damn. 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 <laughs> and where they go there. So... How do you like? How do you handle the? Um, <laughs> that was a great analogy. Uh, but you know, but it's like I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm comfortable. But how do you handle like this? You know, getting outside of your comfort zone. What, what advice or what? How do you go about 
understanding that life is going to throw you some uneasy moments at times. How do you work through those? Um, I don't like those moments, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I'll talk to, I have my certain people that just like, I call my little pom-pom cheerleaders in the corner. I can talk to them and once again, I self-reflect. I'm like, is it me? Well, why did my stomach hurt when this person come around? Or what? They said this. Why do why you think I took it this way? You know, but a good friend of mine, my pom-pom always say, consider the source. Mm-hmm. So when I know where it's coming from, I know where it's coming from a good place. If you're telling me something and it's for me and you're not just trying to, you know, as we say, throw shade. I know how to take it. And if it's somebody that's just, you know, bashing, I'll go play my music. That's just one of my yeah, therapies. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great therapy. That's real, real truth. Real work truth. on some stuff. And then people will be like, thank you so much because, you know, what you're doing is, you know, you know, a lot of us needed this. Yeah. So I'm mm-hmm. glad you said it. So I'm like, I helped somebody else out. That right. makes me feel good. Then I'm like, I'm done. I don't, you know. Tap that, out. That was a moment, <laughs> you Tap know. Out. And I'm done with that. So I just hurry up and try to move on to something else. And I, I learned how not to internalize everything because that was my thing. It was always, you know, oh, I must have did yeah, something, beat myself. Right. Or I should have did it like this. Or he'll be like, your face was like this. I'm like, people know me. Like, I'm not going to keep trying to fix my face to, you know, Make like, you come okay. on. I'm not always on it. It was like, yeah. sometimes it's, it's them. Like, did you see that? You don't, I'm the only, <laughs> you know, so I don't do that no more. Now I'm like, you know, everybody know I'm the same every day as you say, regular. How that's you right. doing? You see, you say, you, how you doing? I'm great. How you there doing? You go, exactly. You're like, she don't look like she great. But that's, no, but focused. that's exactly But I'm that's like, I'm want. great, you know, because I am I know what I'm about to be. So I'd like, Mar- I like Mar- to expound on that. Um, oh, okay. Oh, oh, my goodness. Super DJ Sean. Why use right. big words? Super DJ. <laughs> expound. Expound. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, expound, my brother. I'm going to expound a little bit. Um, for me, um, with all of what you're talking about right now is um, energy. So um, I could put this out on air right now. My wife knows. Um, everybody just about that I've ever met in my life has to do with music. Um, so with music, I, I had a, a collective of spiritual and also uh, personal relationships with every individual person mm-hmm. that I've mm-hmm. talked to outside of my immediate family. So when it came down to these type of feelings or the energy or the negativity, I always, that's why they call me rebel, rebelled it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I try to stand clear And yes, all of these topics are hitting home Because I'm thinking about what y'all are talking about um, I've always rebelled negative energy around me Because I was always taught by the OGs And I shout them all out, but not by name um, They taught me that The circle that you hang around Is the circle of success that you're going to see yourself mm-hmm. found in Because you're going to mimic Or they're going to mimic you And your behaviors and your timely fashions Of what you're doing mm-hmm. If I hang around millionaires, what am I going to be? I'm going to feel like I'm a millionaire because I'm hanging around rich people. If I hang around poor people, no disrespect to any demographic or or uh, you're, talking about be, you're talking about the you talking about yeah, the behaviors of those the behavior, yeah. mm-hmm. the mentality. That's right. And, yep. and, and your energy things. is where I bring in my energy. And the first thing that me and my wife do is we love on people hard. Like yo, like you family, we don't even know you, but mm-hmm. we're gonna love on you like True. we just we like we known each other for forty years. True. Then from there, everything from that energy feels comes back to us in alert <laughs> this person ain't right mm-hmm. alert that person's a great friend <laughs> mm-hmm. alert they're riding the fence <laughs> they don't know what they want to do they don't know if they want to rob you or be your friend you know? right. <laughs> they don't you, but we have those type of personalities in life and that's where I come from y'all so I just wanted to expound on what y'all are talking about definitely no, yep, no, you <laughs> no, you look. That wasn't supersonic. That was that, great. Was, that was actually <laughs> great. I had to drop that. No, no, a no, times, like, Super though, DJ. Expound. Anytime, expound. please, because I think that to, when you're talking about relationships, those are some of the key ple- key things that people have to look out for. And when when it talks about staying comfortable, because when you're trying to step outside of your comfort zone, you you have to uh, you have to move beyond your fears. And so you're going to encounter some people, like you say, that person's great. Some straddlers that you're still figuring out, and some people's like, nah, they, they don't belong here. Right. Or, we, we don't have to relate. They can continue doing what they're doing, but we won't build on that. So the lady, um, uh, 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 Amy Morenz, she, she talks about staying your comfort zone. She said, mentally strong people face their fears. They venture into the unknown areas and test their limits. They know that being uncomfortable is tolerable, and allowing themselves to experience discomfort is the key to living a better life. We are not, life is not. Life always throws these these different trials and circumstances. It's because this thing called life, and we're doing it with people. The one thing you don't and you should not run away from, and I always tell my girls, I don't want them running away from the discomfort that comes from a tough teacher, a tough course, 
a mm. tough dance competition or whatever. And I always teach them not to focus on the teacher. I don't want them focusing on the teacher or the competitor. I said, I want you to become whole inside of who you are. And when you realize you've done what you need to do and given your best, that's all that matters to me. And see, then you can feel like even if you don't get the first place trophy, if you know you've given everything you can give That's right. to whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, that even if it doesn't pay off in this moment, in life it will eventually come. So you got to get outside of that comfort and zone. And also, process. you know, I, I, I say all the time, and I've said a couple times throughout this podcast, my habit is and has always been to run into fear. You know how when you, you know, when your children were little kids, and you say, you know, you start chasing them around the house mm -hmm. and your child's innate when they love you reaction is to turn around and run to you, even mm -hmm. though you're scaring them. You know, that fear, that anxiety, that adrenaline that runs through your body when you are facing what you feel you can't overcome and then you overcome that. It is a great reward. Mm -hmm. I think too many times we spend so many days of our lives hiding in a corner we miss the opportunity to learn from the discomfort. That's right. All right. So next on the list, and this is a this is one. Mind you, thirty to sixty seconds. I'm, I'm gonna watch the clock closely, and all three of you guys can chime in on this. The victim mentality, mm. thinking the world, and this ties into what we were talking about on Tuesday, sis. And I wish I'd have had this for Tuesday. <laughs> thinking the world and the people in it are out to get you will prevent you from being your best. In fact, if you blame all of your problems or external circumstances, or, or your problems on external circumstances, you'll never take the responsibility for your life. Before y'all go, this is where we agree, and this is where, when we were talking about uh, certain people at the Revolt Summit, where I, where all of us agree with this. And one of the things I will say to uh, people of color and those who listen to this podcast. Your success and your destiny in your life is your choice. Yes, there are circumstances. Yes, the, the thing that brought Lovely and keep me on the clock. I should have about 30 more seconds. But one, one of the things that brought Lovely and I together was the fact that our father wasn't in our lives. And when we got together, we didn't get together really. I don't think we ever complained about him. We didn't like him and the things that he did. But we didn't make that a reason for us to continue to stay in the state that we were in. The success that we see in our families is because we chose it right. was a choice. So I would tell people when you when if you think it's what happened on outside of you, whether it's your, 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 your missing dad, the person that may have chosen to got you. She, I got to cut it that time. Yeah. So Supersonic. 60 Rebel. seconds. What's up? I don't the even know what to tell. say. I was trying to do some engineering. Oh, in the go, background. Go, go, go. Lovely. I mean, <laughs> Kay Latte. I am lovely. <laughs> you are lovely. You are lovely. Um, Latte. <laughs> I always talk about accountability. So I don't really do the whole victim thing. I don't like what other people do. They kind of. Uh, Rubs me the wrong way So I definitely have to Check myself on my response To the victim I don't like when If you tell somebody About themselves You know you say Face something head on And you tell someone About how What they're doing Is making you feel mm -hmm. And then they tell you You're a plain victim That really gets me Because you're saying That I'm not entitled To feel how I feel And those are two different And I would say Those are two different things I would say It's a difference between Accepting accountability Or mentally right. acknowledging Something was tragic Because if someone's Going through and as Lovely has talked about on the air, if you've been you know, molested, and if you, or even if you're going through the trauma of having, you know, your parents going through divorce or right. whatever the case may be, you have the right to, to experience right. those things. And it doesn't mean that you don't stay in your space. What it is is when you start allowing that, even if you're, even if in that moment it hits you, what we would tell people who are trying to be mentally strong is, is accept that as a part of life. And once you accept that as a part of life, get with people. Find materials, find music, find things to help you to recover as opposed to stay there ex ex expecting those circumstances to change when, in fact, they may not be able to change. So right. it is a, that, that's a long road there. So, lovely. Trying to impress. Yeah, this is good for you because you can, you can go in. <laughs> <laughs> trying to impress people. People who are trying to be mentally strong, they give up trying to impress people. You can waste a lot of your life trying to make people like you depending on admiration from others. However, give others um, from uh, try, depending on admiration from others. However, this gives others power over you. So what are your thoughts on trying to impress people and, and, and how you go about life not trying to live that way? Oh, give them that story that you told about when you were first in a law firm where you spent the first 10 years being something different oh, okay. and then you kind of was free so to kind of like I've worked, I've worked at for 20, it'll be 21 years in December. 
And my first, I say all the time, my first 10 years working there, I tried to fit into quote unquote white standards. I tried to wear my hair straight. I tried to dress apart. I tried to, you know, change my speech. I, you know, I remember having a time where I didn't allow friends to come visit me there that didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. And at first, you know, I used to try to make it this black white thing, but it wasn't because even the black in the black community, we have this whole, you know, you know, you have to talk a certain way. You have to walk a certain way. You know, we'll beat ourselves up for not being corporate or white. Flip side will also beat your ass for being corporate or white, you oh, know. Yeah. You, you so stuck that, that, that you know, so sword. and mm-hmm. you know, like I said, it took about ten years, and eventually, I just decided to be me because who I am is worth something. I wouldn't be where I was if I was if something about me wasn't great Amen. and divine. Amen. So I decided that who I was was worth exploring. It was worth sharing. And it absolutely was worth being 100% me. Now, what I will tell you is that it took a long time. Because if you grow up acting a certain way, um, being a certain way, being fake and false to yourself, mm-hmm. you don't you don't unlearn those in a day or two. Right. You, it takes a long time to learn that. And just a, a, I wanted to say something about the victimization part of life. You know, you I remember, I know, you exceeded, you but I, 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 just, I just need to say something but to get it off my podcast. chest. I think Go. that you got 15 seconds. <laughs> I think that that the victimization clause that we allow ourselves to live in is really just us being fearful of overcoming the problems that we have. Too many of us like living in the hurt instead of mm. embracing the newness that we can have after we leave. Yes. So how about we do this? Because we're going to we're going to continue. We got th- three more to go or four more to go seven eight nine and ten what we'll do is, is and, and so what we can do is, is let's take some time to jump on because we could take each one of these and and turn these into like nice little podcasts where we can actually delve in and talk I'm, about with you, I'm with you all right so we'll do that so the pursuit of perfection dj you can come on sean sean rebel you got you got you got chime in on this one too man so the pursuit of striving for excellence is healthy we all want to do this but insisting on perfection is mm. an uphill battle You'll never feel good enough if you set the bar impossibly high. How do we? How do we deal with? How do you guys deal with that? I'm not perfect, but um, you know that 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 whole mentality. Like, because some people really come down hard on themselves. Right. You watching an athletes and you watching and people all the time. Even students who the parent has to set the bar this high, and it's right. like if you if, you know. Yeah, I remember the first time my oldest daughter she excelled really really well, and I remember one time and she helped me so much when. She came home one time and she was in this course and she had a C. So I told you I was more militant with her and I remember saying to her, I was like, why are you happy you got a C? I said, this, right. is, this is not what you do. She said, you don't understand what I had to do to get that C. That right. C was everything I had right. and she was pumped up. And I was like, lesson learned, baby girl. It's not the grade, it's mm-hmm. the effort that goes into it that makes, right. it makes it what it works. And so, I mean, it helped change a lot for me. So to me, failing is not the grade, failing is the effort. So that's how yeah. I look at perfection. Mm. So what, are you, what about you guys? You kind of filled that in for me right there. That was a nice segue for my um, aspirations. The um, My push for all of our kids here is, uh, and myself as well, um, I think um, me personally, I failed at just about everything. So when it came down to my kids, I already had the mistakes made that I knew was right and wrong, the testing portions of what to do and what not to do in certain situations. Mm-hmm. Marriage, kids, high school, because I skipped high school a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, in the music field, like I said, I did a lot of music, so um, I made a lot of mistakes Met a lot of people that were grimy. Um, met a lot of people that were heartfelt. But um, when you when you do business, and we can go on a tangent with that. But back to the the basics of it, um, I really push my kids hard, and and I, and it hurts me now to think about it because, as you said, um, it, you don't know what it took to get to the C, Dad. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, C's not good enough. Yeah, I, I need you to I need you to graduate with with honors mm-hmm. because it's going to be tough once you get out in the world. Yeah, and me coming up personally with my mom and my sister at the time because I didn't know I had this large family just like you and um, mm-hmm. and, and, and Lovely. Um, I, it was just just two of us at the time. And, yeah. then, and then it was a struggle. It was it was a rich time when I first, because my, before my sister was born, there was a rich time. And then when my sister was born, the family split. So when they split, figure it out for yourself. Yeah. And that's where I'm segueing to. I'm figuring it out for myself. I made too many mistakes mm-hmm. in my life to say, 
I'm not going to have my kids and myself go through this anymore. If it's like I tell everybody, if you ask my wife, she'll tell you. I always explain the same thing. If you go to the right and there's a hole in the ground, don't go that way. And the kids would be like, I got this, Dad. I said, don't go to the right. And I explain it to them all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what they do? They don't go to the left where the glory is or to the money. They go to where the right is because they're curious. Mm-hmm. And we can segue that into a whole lot of different yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, true that. That's it. I mean. Copy that. Copy just, that. Just the, just the knowledge. That's what I'm talking about right no, now. No, I feel you. And I think that, like, the one thing that she says in this, in this article is mentally strong people accept that they're going to be failures or make they're going to be mistakes in life. I always tell people, I say, there's a difference between making a mistake and, and something becoming a habit. A mistake may be something you learn, you know, after a couple of times because you, you've tr- you're trying. You're trying to be entrepreneur, right. engineering, and things of that nature. The difference is, is when you continue to make the same, to make the same decision, understanding it's not leading you to success. That's no longer a mistake. That's a choice. Right. And so hmm. that's that's Facts. not even about you know failure and things of that nature. It's you you understand that that's about about, about being accountable and responsible. And all of us have Facts. said that here. So lovely, uh, I'm going to come to you with grudges. Then um, uh, our, the next one is the quest for material things, and then is self reliance. And so we have a few more minutes left, so we'll jump into these. So grudges, you may think that holding on to a grudge somehow punishes someone else. But in reality, clinging to anger and hatred only reduces your life. Go, sis. So my husband knows this. I, I really believe that one of the gifts that God gave me was the ability to overcome adversity. And I am not the person that holds on to grudges very long. I actually have a... Um, this weird thing with me where I can feel the pain in the moment, but once I understand what happened, Mm -hmm. I can let it go. Trisha gets mad. And I got to say this, keep, (laughs) but I only got to say this because we always do these aha moments. Trisha gets mad at me because she said, I forget people too easily and I just let go and move on. And so it was, it's just funny when I hear you say this, like that's one of those other, like, so you like, like said earlier, you know, we have the same dad, different moms. Mm -hmm. And a long time ago, I had to let the grudge go that I had against my father for not being in my life Mm -hmm. because I realized that him being in my life would have been detriment to my Mm, health. It would have been detriment to my mental stability. It would have been detriment to my family. And I had to also realize that his struggle by himself right. had to be a voluminous amount of pressure mm-hmm. because of the, the the way he grew up and what he had to encounter. He did not have the capacity to give us what we needed. What he did give us that I'm proud of is our fight, our strength, our knowledge. We have great genes. <laughs> we just are oh, really okay. Like um, right there, boy. You My know, God. but it's just one of those things. And to to let that go, because I cannot imagine being in his shoes with his story and coming out the person that I am. Right. But I also know that right. I didn't need that to be in my life in order for me to be a better person. All right. All right. So next on the list, the, the, these are the last two. The quest for material things, no matter how much money you make, a bigger house, a nicer car or more expensive clothes won't give you peace of mind. Expecting material possessions to satisfy your needs will leave you sorely disappointed. Mentally strong people aren't necessarily minimalist. However, they can enjoy nice things, but they don't expect their material possessions to give them joy and contentment. Man, that's a lot to pack in that. Anybody yeah. want 30 seconds? To I'm basically kinda... 30 seconds going to say I love, I'm a lover of um, just the little things, the simple things, um, the right and note as opposed to, hey, I bought you this big, I don't, I don't, I never need all that. Mm-hmm. Supersonic. Go Rebel. I buy big things. I'm with you, son. But you, but like you say, but it's a difference. She says, she says it in the article, like you say, you, she says, mentally strong people can enjoy nice things but they don't expect their material possessions to give them joy and contentment right. there's a difference you don't have to depending on where yeah. you are, i have friends who say I've, i have friends who will wear flannel shirts and and be psychedelic and be all of this and i'll be like bro i respect the fact that you're true you to yourself mm-hmm. you know what i mean i, I put a, a tie-dye shirt on one day i was looking like that ain't gonna work for me bro. right i love you but that. i said not even for charity i can't do it i can't yeah, do and it you have to also <laughs> remember that you know Whatever you hold um, true to value is for you. That's right. I always say I present myself. How I present myself to the world is how I see me. It's not how you see me. That's right. And for a long time, it took a long time. My husband and I, I used to say all the time to people, they'd be like, oh, you dress like that for your husband. No, I dress like that for me. But if he really likes it, it's amazing. Right. It's a bonus. When my husband looks really nice, I appreciate it. But I want him to be him, not me. Right. You know? Yeah. Look good for me, baby. Oh uh, shit! Complete self reliance. 
<laughs> the last one is. I need it both ways. <laughs> hey, here you go. Thinking you can do everything on your own is about acting tough, not being strong. Mm. There will be times when asking for help is important. Oh, Mentally strong goodness. people aren't afraid to admit when they need help, whether they rely on a, a higher power, ask for professional help, or lean on a friend during a time in need. They gain strength from others. Knowing they don't have to have all the answers give, right. gives them a renewed sense of inner peace. We need, and I'll, I'll wrap it up on this, we need each other in this journey. One of the reasons we started this podcast and as we were going down this road was because we wanted to talk about issues and we wanted everybody to realize, yep, it's okay to be not just broken. And my sis always puts on there and she says, we're not broken. What she means by that is not that you're not experiencing hard times in life, not that you're not experiencing adversity. She wants you to understand that the ability to be whole starts the moment you decide, hey, I'm going to seek out help. I'm going to talk to that friend. I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to forgive this person. I'm going to accept responsibility and accountability to take this next step. Your brokenness ends the moment that you decide to make certain choices in life. So, good people, we greatly appreciate you joining us this week. You didn't let me have my moment. Oh, you know what? My moment. Lovely has her lovely moment that she always blesses each show with. So, but we're going to do it after. The DJ, break? okay. Sean Ruff. My apologies, sis. And we'll be Let back. Me have my moments. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Huh? They can't see you. They can see you. <laughs> <laughs> I give it so many so good. So good. If you're just tuning in, the Super you DJ Sean Rebel Organic Radio. Like, mm-hmm. Organic Radio Show. We had some technical difficulties earlier, but like I told y'all, if y'all tuning in, we definitely going to blaze y'all with that new mixtape. Oh, my man, Buckshot Shorty, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Stand Up. Your boy had the opportunity with, along with DJ Green Lantern 1574 to do a mixtape for Buckshot Shorty. It's supposed to be released in June, y'all, June 15th to be exact. But um, I'm going to give y'all a sneak peek of what's going on. So holler at me. Right after the podcast of All Up In Your Business podcast, a.k.a. the Organic Radio Show. The platform for the platform. Every time you give me a topic, I have a person that comes to mind. One, two. We good, we good, we good, we good. I'd like to thank the callers for calling in. one 1 The radio station, radio, radio, mix station, radio, mix station, radio, live. Make sure y'all hashtag it and check out. You know what I'm saying? Go to Google, hit the hashtag, and put in mix station, radio, live. You'll see all the podcasts and all of the platforms that we're on. We don't be lying, we don't be cheating. So we out here, y'all. And uh, right now, you rocking with the best super DJ Sean Rebel. Radio co-host K Latte Life about to blaze off her own show. She about to leave me, y'all. She about to leave me, man. Nah, she ain't. She ain't. She ain't leave me. I got engineer the whole track. So we gonna be doing that, y'all, definitely in the near future. Uh, 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 uh. I know some of y'all out there want to rap right now. My man Shy Brown over there in the corner. He about to hit this lyric real quick. We gonna give him the mic. You ready? One. Come on, Sha. Come on, Sha. Come on, Sha Brown. Come on. <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> hey uh, we ain't only got their mics on. They over there having fun, y'all. The Organic Radio Show live right now. You know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and get mellow because they about to, well, my, you know, my sugar rush is over. They gave me cookies and, and some other food, so now they dropped down. But uh, we good, though. Sha Brown laughing at me. We're going to keep that shop around, too. That's his alias, so that way nobody know who he is. You said too late? You said too late? Uh-oh. Uh, oh, oh. Nah, ain't nobody hear that on the mic. Ah, I'm over here asking questions. Y'all can't hear what I'm asking them, though. So, uh, once again, organic radio show. So, we're going to hit y'all back with all up in your business <laughs> podcast.
and we're black. black. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I love it. Yes, I yes, love yes, it. Y'all. So, um, to wrap up, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, this positive energy, like this, this love, this family that we've created, it's just great. Um, I think for me, my lovely moment today, um, just still piggybacks on what I always say. There will be times in your life where you don't fit in. And I want you to hold your ground. I want you to stand your ground. And if it is who you truly That's believe right. that you are, you know, right. if it's in your heart that this one thing mm. stands for you, I don't want you to waver. I think too many times in this day and age with social media, bullying, um, with the aggressive nature of the world right now, Mm -hmm. we are led to believe that we have to be something that we're not. Mm -hmm. And all that does is cause confusion in your mind. And confusion causes problems. And a lot of the times you can't see a way out because it is not your innate person responding to that. You know, it's the anxiety talking. It's your depression talking. Mm -hmm. It's your fear talking. And I don't want you to feel that you are obligated by any means to be anything different than who you are. So when you, um, what I would, we would like you to take from this is the uniqueness of it. Mm -hmm. Light is his person. I am my own person. K Latte, Rebel, Shy Brown. (laughs) We are all so very very different. But without each one of us, we would not have the connection that we have. We appreciate you guys so much. We love that you follow us. Um, If you could do us a great favor and like or follow our pages on All Up in Your Business, A L L U P N U R B I Z N E S S podcast on Instagram. Um, you can also follow us personally at L I T E dot N U R B I Z or L O V E L I B R O W N. We of course, um, of course appreciate everything that you guys send to us and we just can't wait to continue this fellowship. We will continue to challenge you with phonetically challenged names as we enjoy this journey down (laughs) mental health, (laughs) because we know the names that we put out there may be challenging, but Test that mental test that mental muscle, y'all. To keep taking this journey with us. All up in your business. Pow pow. <laughs> Thank you. Julia's milk. Julia's big mistake.